Folks, welcome <laughs> to the Pretend Friends Podcast. We are here a little late. I was dealing with a uh, hostage negotiation situation. Um, <laughs> for those of you uh, who don't have children, which is I, I'm going to assume 99% of you because people our age don't have children typically, um, it's sometimes a kid just gets in a mood and there, there's no shaking them out. So I made this child chicken. I air fried chicken thighs. Good Whole Foods chicken Dude, thighs. Chicken thighs and air fryer? Fucking amazing. Yeah. Incredible. Right? Paprika, yeah. salt, pepper, so olive good. oil, and some and some Parmesan encrusted broccoli that I also put in the air fryer. Mm. So just like mm. beautiful. Any any reasonable person would be like, this is great. But he takes one bite of the chicken and he's just like, No, the chicken's <laughs> too wet. And like when he, when he starts saying stuff like that, I'm like, like, look, dude, I, I got to go record a podcast. A little bit more important it? than your little fit, okay? <laughs> but I'm like, okay, what what can I make for you instead? And he's just like, can you make me a peanut butter and jelly? So oh. I'm, like, I'm like, okay, fine. That's Speaking that's okay. Language. So I go over to the kitchen. I pull out the uh, the Dave's Killer Bread, which, by the way, with the greatest bread. The, the greatest guy with the guitar. In, yeah, the greatest innovation of bread that has ever happened it's in the, the country. Seven dollar loaf of bread. You'll yeah, buy. Yeah, I'm being serious. serious. That's really it good. is really good. Yeah. I have two but, loafs right now. Because the alternative country. is like, Wait, remember what's, when? What's remember great about it. It's just it tastes really good. There's not that much added sugar. Whole There's like grains. grains. It's great, it's yeah. it's spectacular. And the and the the alternative to Dave's is like, what am I? Am I going back to Home Pride? Am I going to get Bimbo? That shit. Get that's one like of those all disgusting plain bagels. That's just like bleached white Ugh. and shit. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe I used to eat like white bread. I know. And kid. remember remember you would eat it Ew. and it, if it was like a turkey sandwich, if there's mayonnaise or something, it's just sticking to the top it's of your just fucking like, mouth. Oh, it becomes God. like this goop. Like, it's, it's like disgusting. It's like, because that bread is just oh, 90% like, like, and like and it's just like sticking to the roof of your ear. Yeah. Of your yeah. It's 90% enriched flour. Dude, it's, I, it's I mean, awful. You might as well be eating like a Twinkie, I feel like. Wait, you think, wait, you think so? It's enriched flour. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's all Ew. white and rich flour. Dude, That's especially, what, especially if uh, you had a sandwich made. I don't know about you guys, my mom would make me sandwiches. From my cold lunch at school when I was a kid, and uh, they'd be sitting like she'd make me like a PBJ, and then that PBJ sits next to an uh, an ice pack, and then by the time it's lunch, it's like fucking soggy and shit. Yeah, too. you get oh well, the soggy sandwich is, is uh, nasty. I remember uh, going to an Embassy Suites, and I don't know if you guys remember the Embassy Suites hotel commercials where it'd be that fat kid being like, "Hey, welcome to Embassy Suites. <laughs> like, Wait, it's so what? much fun here." Yeah, you guys don't remember the I fat don't. kid from Embassy Suites? We're gonna have to pull that <laughs> no. up. We're gonna have to pull that up in editing. But anyway, if, if it was it comes this, up on YouTube, this obese child would walk around Embassy people, Suites generally. and like and just have fun with the people in the Embassy Suites. So I was like, "Oh, great, I'm staying in an Embassy Suites." But I was there for like a, a weird <laughs> school conference thing, and they. Gave us the the moistest sandwiches. Ew. You know, it's like they defrost. It's like the it's like the sandwiches were frozen and they defrosted them, and we had. Ew, to eat dude, for you to still remember that, those must yeah. have been. Some it's really real <laughs> rant. But I was a fat kid myself, so shout out to oh. the 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 hotel kid. I was just shitting. What changed, on, but- Nathan? <laughs> how did you, how did you turn? I, didn't, around? I stopped eating fucking Wonder Bread. That's for sure. I think you could all. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's dude, bread. That's how. <laughs> That's what changed. <laughs> yeah. W- were you like, where the fuck's the fat kid when you got there? <laughs> but any- anyway, the embassy you suite sucks. Wonder Bread. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But back to my- back to the story. So I make him the fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And by the way, what I get the good peanut butter. I get like stuff that you have to mix yourself with the oil that's salted. It's the Trader Joe's stuff. Oh, it's- that annoying ass one. Oh, that's <laughs> good. It's, it's so really thick, really good. Yeah. But guess who doesn't like it? My fucking son. So for him, I, I have mean, to get. I probably wouldn't either if I was a child. It's really honest. good. It's re- I, I'm a child I, and I don't really like it. That dude. Much. All right, I whatever. Just, I well, get, it depends I on get, your application. Like, what do you use peanut butter for? Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. Like, okay, to be. Uh, All right, whatever. So you're making peanut. So butter I'm making them the peanut butter and jelly sandwich with the fucking <laughs> Skippy peanut butter, which is just fucking canola oil. Like, it's uh, not good. It's canola oh. oil and added sugars. Damn, and I just stop adding, eating that shit. I eat yeah, that shit, like every day. I, I, I eat crunchy Skippy. I eat crunchy Skippy. Oh shit. lord. So the, his problem now is I I cut it in a way that some of the peanut butter was coming out of the corners of Hell the sandwich. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. And he's just like, I, I can't do it. I can't. I can't eat this fucking sandwich because there's a little bit of peanut butter coming out the edges. So I'm like, I'm just he's trying. He's like, hey, I asked for a peanut butter sandwich, not a smash peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, basically. So <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I go get the knife and I cut the little pieces of the peanut butter that are out. And then oh my God. he's like, okay, uh, I'm only going to take two bites. And he takes two tiny nibbles. And then my wife fucking loses it. She's like, I'm not making you anything else. You either eat this fucking sandwich or you're, you're going yeah. to bed. She didn't say fucking don't. She doesn't curse at the child. Um, but then he starts freaking out and then goes to his room and I have to like talk him down in his room. And this whole time I'm thinking about buddy, I got to go record the pretend Friends yeah, podcast. Yeah. 
All right, that's just that's just you know, that's top of Buddy. my list here. And son, I, I don't got time to deal with this. Buddy, <laughs> yeah. And that it kind of made me. It yeah. kind of made me. It made me. You know, you sympathize with uh, Hamas because that's like that's probably what Hamas is dealing with right now with all those Israeli hostages. <laughs> You're trying what to talk them down. <laughs> what is the latest on that? I feel um, like it's uh, like. Oh uh, well, Israel tried to make them peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Yeah, I know. No. And, Hamas is uh, like, no, they no, took no. two bites and said, "We don't want them." Hamas is like, "No, no, no! There's peanut butter coming out of the edges. Uh, no hostage for you." Uh, Dude, earlier, earlier, remember Nathan? You were talking about um, how you went to an after-school program that was like entire. <laughs> it was like all black kids. Oh yeah, yeah. So I um, one summer I was visiting Nathan. And Nathan was happening to be going to a summer camp with this after school program that he was at. So I accompanied him <laughs> <laughs> to this camp. And it was also because even though I'm like half black, I grew up in a 99% Mexican community. So I had never been around black people. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we were both experiencing that for the first time. It was, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was cool. That was like, I wonder what all those people are up to. Do you keep up with any of them? Uh, a couple of them, not really. I heard one time there well, was, I don't have Facebook anymore. There was a token white kid in that camp who I remember <laughs> distinctly. One time he got really frustrated at like another kid and he called him a black piece of fudge. <laughs> 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 it finally came out. It was like one of the later yeah. days that I feel like this guy was just getting picked on a lot. He, he just, just had it, dude. He just cracked. <laughs> oh my God. You never, you never <laughs> want a Michael Richards <laughs> moment. <laughs> Dude, if you if you are the only white guy or white looking person in a large group of black people, you better do something crazy. You're in, you're in prison rules now. You have to find someone who doesn't have a friend and beat them savagely. Those kids were pretty mean to me. I remember one of them. <laughs> one of them was like, because you know I wasn't like, <laughs> I didn't behave in a manner consistent with them. Given, yeah, yeah. Uh, the different environment I grew up in. So um, one of them said. <laughs> You give black people a bad name. Ooh, <laughs> oh, damn. Damn. Oof. How did that feel? But, 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 this was early in the program, right? And I think somehow I was able to turn it around. <laughs> so on the last day of this program, um, we were, me and this kid, who was like this like cool kid, we were in the, we were in the bathroom and both in the urinal and I, I, I like the urinals next to each other and he leans over and he talks to me and he's like, hey, so, uh. You going? You want to hang out with me? You want to start hanging out with me now? Get a rep around here. Uh, <laughs> it was like a movie, dude. Uh, <laughs> it was like sick. prison, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Literally, so if you want to start hanging out with me? Home? Get a rep. I was yeah. like, uh, I'm gonna go back to my hometown. <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> that could have been my moment, though, dude. That's cool. Yeah, I could have done it. I could have got cornrows like him, dude. Could have had cornrows. Could have gotten a do rag. Co- cornrows. Remember, remember, like the vice grip that cornrows had on like black culture in the early 2000s. Yeah, like everyone had had cornrows. That was cool. There was like Ludacris, Snoop Doggy Dog. Obviously, had cornrows too. Mm-hmm. And then um, Alan just like Iverson. Alan, Alan Iverson, Iverson had cornrows. Holy shit! Cornrows look cool. Yeah, they, I remember, yeah, remember the controversy yeah. where uh, it was at the believe it was at SF State. Shout out SF State local. Um, there was this kid that had uh, dreadlocks, like this white kid that had dreadlocks, and a, a black woman accosted him and was just like, "That was at SF State. That was at SF State." Yeah, dude, I remember that video. It's so infuriating to watch. Wait, what did she yeah. say? She dude. was just like, "Take those fucking dreads out. Like you don't, be- like you don't." She was like, "You're appropriating dreads. my culture." Basically, yeah. No, yeah. She basically used those words because that's when like that whole uh, yeah. discourse was like relatively fresh. Yeah, right? like that was like a new thing. And was he like? Was he like? No, he was, he was just com- like he was very combative. He was just like, no, I'm well, not. He was fucking- just he was reacting like I think anybody would. They're yeah. just like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah. Like I just think the hair <laughs> looks cool. I also like, think I feel like okay, if someone's doing something, if someone likes a hairstyle that's from a different culture and like they want to ac- accept the risk of like standing out, like I feel like he knew like what the risk was, right? Like he might be like chided for this that's yeah. one thing right whatever yeah people might, people might silently disapprove and that's fine but i feel like the the main use case so to speak of like cultural appropriation that people should have a problem with is like it's like when someone like starts a business around it and sells it as if it were new it's like yeah yeah that's the well, problem right i feel like that's yeah. the thing that like that like that like takes away the cultural heritage of it like you know i mean maybe yeah if you're <laughs> using it yeah. for like nefarious like nefarious Purposes and even if you disapprove, whatever. I feel like just like getting in his grill and being like, you shouldn't do this is like, well, it's just, I mean, it's, it's just, you're but, not going to okay, The thing is, the thing is, though, it's not, I feel like the issue or the, where people go wrong with this is that they make it like a, a black person thing, which it is. There's obviously a degree of that, obviously, or like being a minority, whatever, and like the discourse at the time. But also, what's important is that 
they're an undergraduate student. <laughs> yeah, Those kids are stupid. Yeah. Like, what do you talk? Like, they're eight, they're like 18 to 22 yeah. years old. They're fucking, I was there. Yeah. They're, they're really stupid. So, like, they're going to, they're, they have a lot of passion. Their hearts are in the right places. I think their application of things are, is unrealistic sometimes. And, like, this is an example of that coming to fruition. So, it's like, it's like all bad. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like bad from uh, <laughs> bottom to the top. It's just like, it's just, like, it's just a horrible. Totally it's like, man, I'm really bad. I feel bad that a kid got bullied. Yeah, I feel bad that this lady feels so strongly about this, um, and it's being misdirected. <laughs> yeah, I was, it's funny. Uh, well, that's just college kids. I don't know. You got to appreciate that energy, though. I guess I was just uh, talking to Christian, friend of the pod, Christian, uh, two time guest, um, and he reminded me of uh, we were talking about you know obviously the the Kendrick Lamar uh, Drake beef, and he was talking about like when's the last time you listened to to Pimp a Butterfly, and I was like, probably not since it like came out. Because it's like to to sit and listen to a pimp, a pimp a butterfly. It's like a it's a very theme heavy album. It's very dense. It's not something you can just like pick songs out of. I feel like it's like it's like a book. You got to read it from start to finish. Um, but I tried doing it, and it just brought me back to like that time of really annoying racial discourse, like just yeah. really pervasive, like being on Facebook and just like <clears throat> seeing people getting into arguments about this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Well, the thing I that do, makes yeah. is most annoying about the lady being like you're appropriating is like just like isolationist mentality. Why don't why don't shouldn't you want to be like sharing yeah. cultures and stuff? I don't know. To no, me, that, that was the thing like, that kind of came out of that movement a lot too, because like there was people being like, "Hey, there should be areas on campus where it's like only black people can come, only black people can hang out." Wait, really? And we're, yeah, and they're like, "Yeah, we we tried that already. Yeah, it's, it's called, called segregation. segregation right? Like we took a lot to like." Like, break like, it why can't you get, like, why can't you just go sit over there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> in a group or yeah. yeah. But it's always one of those things. It's like, look, look, I'm not black. And maybe on the surface, things sound kind of silly to me, but like, that is your experience, baby. Like, I have no fucking idea. So, yeah. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, like, their ire and their frustrations are very valid for very valid reasons. They're yeah. learning a lot of truths at once about yeah. stuff, right? And it makes them upset. Um, and it should, because I feel like, you kind of do feel like you're you feel like you feel like you're different like forever like your whole right. life basically yeah. it yeah. stands out so like you're going to be in a defensive like right mindset yeah after enough time generally and then someone else someone else like, comes at in and they pick and choose like the parts that they like and they take them and is that yeah. kind of what you're saying and i feel yeah. like that's like my issue with like you know that fucking comedian hasan minaj yeah oh, God, I, God, I hate that fucking blows. Blows. Okay, yeah. so wait, you guys hasan you guys, minaj. you guys give your takes first like yeah fuck you you fucking you you you, you person who think you're like a preacher or something yeah shit, no it's like stand up i don't like i don't have any like in-depth ideological arguments against him i just like video board there's a certain strand of uh stand-up comedians that it's like it's not laughter it's like clap clafter you know what i mean like people yeah. are just like agreeing with yeah. them like oh my god yeah. he's like yeah, you're so insightful wow that's oh, what it's I really think like. I know what you're about to say though Osama bin Laden basically acts like as if he's part of the black community like he does really yes well he, well, he lumps indian people and black people together it's like we are the same oh, right guys hold on, wait a minute buddy there's I, a real big income am I, am I wrong or between is this is that also right? isn't he pakistani whatever i have no idea all i know is that um i mean like i think that's that's like a that's a savvy business move of him to do for well, sure yeah. Yeah, yeah of course um but no i think my issue with him is like that his stories and his anecdotes about encountering racism were just so bombastic and like drop like dramatized. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's just like it was like like and it turns out that a lot of them were fabricated. Yeah, yeah they're dude, literally course, not true. A fucking core. <laughs> but, really but then true. like it kind of bothers someone like me. Kind of what I was touching on earlier is that like it's not really like the fucking movie moments of somebody saying like I don't want my daughter to date you or something like yeah. that. Like black boy because yeah. like. That is that is so racist. That's often like humorous. It's just like whoa, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. racist. It's not really that. It's just like small things over time. Mm -hmm. It's like someone yeah. making a black joke and saying like, "Oh, it's not a big deal." Huh? It's like you're not, you know, just like yeah, thinking yeah, it's okay, yeah. right? And making stereotype jokes, but it's like one person thinks they're cool with you like that, but then so does everybody else. Ooh. And it's just like seeing these media depictions just over and over again, mm, right? Yeah. And like and death by a thousand cuts. And maybe yeah. like, Actually, you, I'd, again, like to, I'd like to formally apologize by the time on this podcast you, right now to but, Shane. By the time you go into college and you like start learning about like the mechanisms behind like all of this, 
if it's gonna make you mad, bro. Yeah, like, you're dude, gonna course. be like, what the fuck? Like, mm-hmm. fuck that. Yeah. So it sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I empathize with yeah. her. We're like, damn, bro. Him having it's to not make that guy's fault. I feel like, but that's the thing, though. It's like, it's like you need life experience and like to kind of like be out in the world and like <clears throat> see the great, the bigger picture, essentially, and meet different types of people to realize that like it's not that guy's fault, dude. That's not the dude you should be mad at. The guy yeah, wearing yeah, my yeah. hair. Like, yeah. It's that's such a, like a small scale. Like, what are you really doing to overcome racism? By telling this guy to change his hair. Yeah, really not. No, then it's like, I think it, it boils down to like a control <laughs> thing, right? You just want that person to conform to your ideology. Well, yeah, which there's is a, a thing very too, right? Human thing. So yeah. if you're appropriating yeah. culture, I went to the Pride Parade and saw an Amazon float. Oh, yeah, Happy Pride. I saw an Amazon yeah. float? Oh, yeah. fucking Happy Pride. Oh, yeah. I, oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Jacob, tell us about. Uh, uh, it was just, it was just, I was, well, first time I've ever been to the Pride Parade. That was pretty. Pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I mean, it was it was cool. Mm-hmm. It was kind of it's kind of like a party, right? Yeah, but it was just like corporation float, like Amazon. Literally, <laughs> part, part of their float was literally just Amazon Prime delivery trucks. Yeah, just uh, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, really? That's very Amazon of them because they, they they don't really like spending money. You could yeah, have like yeah, some of these cheap. things or something, yeah. dude. They don't True. have like free snacks. I'm, surpri- yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised at the parade they didn't throw out bananas. Oh. <laughs> they have they have such a hard interview process. Yeah. And um they don't give you snacks. So it's like you get through the grinder and you just like yeah. get the a punch in the Dude, face afterwards. It's, it's like the same day. process as like meta, but then you just don't get any Yeah. For those stuff. of you for those of you, like the whole point of working at tech is that they treat you like a baby. Like they yeah, treat you they as a child. You. They it's infantilize crazy. you. They're like, just stay here in the nice big office. There's fucking sleep pods. There's fucking every kind of snack you could want. So to be in a tech environment where people aren't offering you stuff like that is is jarring. And it's yeah. like, why? And then at the end of the day, you're working for Amazon, which sucks. You're basically like the the retail side of Amazon is no different than working for Walmart. You're just transporting cheap, shitty, yeah, Chinese goods like they they into America. Yeah, and like they would they um champion, you know, they are like, "Oh, we've made like a lot of they have made a lot of innovations in terms of like last mile like time yeah. and stuff, but but like the, the the engine that drives that whole machine is just like like labor exploitation. Yeah, yeah. yeah their in, their innovation is like <laughs> is innovation not, is, is like, squeezing more productivity for yeah, less money. Yeah, it's like not letting their like putting their drivers on a timer so they can't like t- go to the bathroom. They have to pee in a bottle. Filming and them mouth. and shit while they're driving. Oh, so they there was a guy. Oh, there was a guy at the pride parade. So what if they want to look Ooh. up the new Playboy issue while they're waiting at a stoplight? Yeah. It's a big deal. <laughs> There's a guy at the pride parade who was who was literally just he had a he had a cross on wheels and it was over his shoulder as if he was Jesus and um, he was just bearing it was his cross to bear and he was just walking along the pride parade with a big old cross yeah. wait he was he was in the parade he was like he was, no he was like on the sidewalk and he was just walking clearly as like a show of like of like Jesus please oh. bring them or whatever oh uh, so he was doing it I thought he was doing it because a lot of gay people will, will dress up in, ironically, ironically, and being like, "Look, I'm a I'm a gay nun or something." No, this guy no, was no. like, this guy, like, this guy was like wearing you know regular clothing. The only thing that he had to him was a big old wooden cross with wheels on it, so he could drag it. Jesus, and it literally looked like he was Jesus, like on the way to like his, his crucifix. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was so fucking funny. I, I've always avoided pride. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One, <laughs> I hate that area where it is. You know, I hate being on oh, like market. Yeah. It's just a hassle, I hate when man. there's a market. One, remember the fucking um, the last time I did this because I just avoid pride. I don't like being in the crowds. Um, more power to gay people, and I love the the gay history of San Francisco. That's all great. I just hate those big ass crowds. Remember mm-hmm. that? Remember when the Warriors won? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that we was went a to the Warriors parade after they won in 2022. Yeah, that that's pretty though. sick. What do you mean? I, I it was a nightmare for me because it was just like wall to wall. People are littering everywhere. Like it's like you have to like elbow through, and you can only see like a tiny fraction. This of the wasn't parade. this was just a small town boy. I also don't <laughs> care. I also don't care about basketball. True, you don't care. So about I was only out there because. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I was only out there because like my coworkers wanted to do this it. This almost wasn't too crazy because like I mean the NBA championship thing you don't know the next time it's going to happen. This happens every year, so there's a lot of people there, but it wasn't like the championship parade. Yeah. Well, I, so yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. Like if you live here long enough, like those things after you've gone there like one or two times, yeah. beta breakers. Fucking yeah. like the pride. I've never parade. done beta breakers either. Um, any like the the Chinese the Chinese New Year parade. Sometimes like mm-hmm. you just 
you just associate with like a hassle yeah. and the time you took a wrong turn yeah. and yeah. got fucking fucked yeah. up yeah. by the one of those events. I win. And you're just like, fuck, dude. I live, and then I mean, you just stop going. I just had to walk avoid. like 10 minutes the other. That's the only reason I went. Oh, yeah, you're really close. Huh? Yeah. I, I mean, it's I've, it's fucking fun. I had a good time the time I was, I was there. Yeah. yeah um, but I, I was gone. in the brand I haven't given my, it a chance with my company, in like five with my years. software company. Oh, it was kind of a, what well, was kind of a fun, um, <laughs> Uh, juxtaposition, I guess, was there was a Dodgers Giants game going on. Oh yeah, so I went, I went from I went from a sea of a bunch of like sp- like Latino sports people to like a sea of yeah. gay dudes. It wow, was that sick. is a uh, yeah huge. <laughs> wow. You know they're playing today. We should. Oh, it's no, they already, they already they actually won. They, they won the series two to one. Dodgers. Oh, I should have went to that. And they oh, should have no. won it three to zero. It went two extra innings yesterday, and then the Dodgers won fourteen to seven. Man, <laughs> wait, <laughs> what? My favorite. It was in the eleventh inning, and then the Dodgers. My, my favorite thing about any LA sporting team is the inevitable fights that happen in the stadium. Oh, it's the best. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. The Dodgers fans are the fucking worst. I've seen, like, I've heard stories. Some guy, oh, dude, last time, um, they, I don't, they don't even do this anymore, but the last year that they did uh, the 49ers versus the Raiders, like three people got stabbed. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they they canceled that game for like for like five years. Yeah. Really? Yeah, like, oh, no, my God. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> The Battle of the Bay, it's called. Yeah. It used to and be then, like uh, an Oak- Oakland, <laughs> I, and uh, the a, the, and the, the Raiders are in Oakland, but the Raiders have a very big fan base in LA because they used to be in LA, so a lot of LA people come up. Yeah, so now they're in Las them. Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> and, dude, uh, where everything goes to die. Dude, Las to Vegas Sacramento. is such fool's gold. Like as like a as like a place like a metropolitan area. It's you know terrible. What I'm saying? Absolutely. It. Such fool's I feel gold. Like My, a personal like, like when God. I think of like purgatory. Like if if I yeah. die and I'm not like bad enough to go to hell. And I'm, I certainly have not earned my way to heaven. I'll tell you that much right now, folks. Uh, to me, is like being in a house in suburban Las Vegas with <laughs> with, with shoddy AC. Yeah. And you look around for miles around you, and it's the exact same house. No, you just stare in the fucking desert. And you just stare at your window, and there's a big fucking happy face of the dome fucking thing staring oh at you. Oh my god! I the fucking sphere of the things, abyss. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, what? it's one of those things. Like I'm sure, like the just the last few times I've went, I'm just like, I, it's horrifying. I'm so overstimulated. I don't really like to gamble. I don't go to strip clubs. And it's like, okay, so what what am I doing here? Oh, you go to the shows. Cirque du Soleil. Oh, yeah, I got to pay $200 to see some gay French clown do a backflip. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> those gay French clowns can do some backflips. So back. Cirque du Soleil, the show O at uh, Cirque du Soleil, I was like, I, I didn't expect too much. I was like, holy shit. Because, right, you know, I feel like in today's world, to see a, someone physically do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's like a honed skill over time yeah. with repetition and timing oh, and yeah. dedication. Mm-hmm. And to see that many people do that and like execute it at that level and like the ambition sure. of the of the stunt sometimes it's like <clears throat> fucking cool. Sure. Like, Damn. Sure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like you feel like it's like it feels real. It's like the only thing in Vegas that feels real at all. You're just like yeah. fuck. Yeah, nice. Like, yeah, I mean yeah. at least someone's doing like a someone's doing beat. something. <laughs> and it's not just like a LED I'm not just thing. like at a fucking slot machine like a goddamn zombie just yeah. like oh. I've ever yeah. seen that. Or <laughs> playing blackjack I think I'm going to win money. Oh, like, do you, I think one of the one of the, not the last time but I think the time or two before I went it was right and like, like uh, six months or eight months after the shooting, which by the way is very fishy. Look into it. Like the official story <laughs> of the Vegas shooting is some bullshit. Oh no! Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 remember, yeah, Nathan, Nathan goes on 4chan. People, we're gonna take this one offline, that. folks. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going. Anyway, um, so I was you would you would seeing it right, and it's like it's like uh, a big. <laughs> A big LED I have a conspiracy billboard. Theory episode. No, a big LED billboard of like Celine Dion, and then yeah. it's like come and see Cirque du Soleil, and then it's like go to the circus circus, and then the next screen would be like this eye that was like if you see any fucking suspicious activity, you report it. <sighs> oh, and then it's back to Celine Dion. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's that seedy underbelly. Wait, yeah, yeah, hold yeah, on, hold on. Can I? I don't want to get too far into it, but just give me the 10 second rundown oh, of, no. of what's fishy about this. Yeah, shooting. so so multiple eyewitness reports are like they're clearly hearing the gunshots coming from multiple locations. Well, this is a and popular for, theory. It's very popular, and it's it's like <laughs> also like the FBI never released a motive for Stephen Paddock. So what the FBI story is is this man carried up. Hundreds and hundreds of pounds of equipment because when they went up there, there was a fucking arsenal. So he did all of that without anybody noticing alone. 
And then somehow, like with a bump stock, was able to unleash hundreds of rounds of ammo into this crowd. And people were saying it was coming from multiple directions. It's the same thing with the Pulse nightclub shooting. It, they were saying it was one guy. Isn't, but hold on. Isn't the likely explanation is that there's a lot of buildings in Las Vegas and the sound was just reverberating and stuff? Yeah, maybe. But Ooh. I don't know. That many people to be like, yeah, we heard it coming from a bunch of different uh, These are really drunk All people. Right. In ba- anyways, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> But and, and, oh, and also how to second not, shooter theory to not have a motive to out. not have a motive and even uh, um, Stephen Paddock's brother was like this doesn't make any fucking sense so it, like all things in the FBI I feel like it was an entrapment scheme that went wrong or some other bullshit that's the other thing too <clears throat> like there's no motive from Stephen Paddock but like I can't imagine a motive of like anyone else so maybe this the official story is true but well, like well you know who no longer has a second shooter the Golden State Warriors Clay Thompson's not Ooh. coming back so what what Thompson. do you mean he's not coming back they said they're not going to resign. Damn. And you know, oh, when they release Chris Paul, it's over, people. The last game I was at uh, was that uh, he got into like a fight and he got like expelled. Wait, you got to, you went to a Warriors game? I went to a war. I got box seats because of my company. And right Clay Thompson got nice. ex- expelled? Yeah, Clay Thompson or got expelled, expelled along with like two other guys. <laughs> cool? I forget who they were playing. Are you sure it wasn't Draymond Green? Yeah, it was Draymond Green, but it was also Clay. And Clay Thompson, too. Oh, yeah, Clay. I think so. I think, I think after. I think so. Um, I could be wrong. Yeah. I, think, I, think, again, I don't know about Clay's been in his feelings a lot lately. So that sounds. That Clay Thompson once went 0 for 10 in an elimination game. Yeah, I think that was his last game with the Warriors. I think he went over. For 10. Is What's that right? Wait, really? Now? I think in the play. What's the deal? Is he just getting old? Do you just kind of start getting old? He tore his ACL. I mean, no. and then he like read like whatever. He tore his old. He tore his ACL and then he got old. <laughs> tore his ACL. Yeah. He had a setback during that recovery, happens. so it was like two years, two I, seasons. I, I think when you get again. to the highest level of a sport, like the smallest difference yeah. in mechanics yeah. yeah. can change, yeah. like can change an athlete. Because like, yeah, forever. they're at like the point oh one percent. So you tear your yeah. ACL and you're oh yeah, you dropped it. Like I realized that kind of sucks because like he was uh, again. I don't know basketball, but he was. Good, right, for a very long time. Yeah. So there was one point where he could have quit while he was on top, but then he decided to just keep going, and then eh. now he's... I, I mean, he, he could have easily, like, signed a reasonable deal with the Warriors and just, like, set off into the sunset, and, like, w- still getting paid tons of money. Yeah. He's still, is he a starter? He thinks he is. That's the problem. Ooh. He sorry, shouldn't Clay be, Thompson. but he thinks Jacob he is. isn't the gear starter. Hey, I've met you before. I feel oh, like... Yeah? Do, well, yeah. do, you, do you guys ever feel like that, where... Like we're getting kind of old. So yes, like I, sometimes oh, yeah. you're just like shit, man. Yeah, I, yeah sometimes I'm like, like, am I like, I'm like, man, I can't fucking get the same KD and Halo that I used to. Just like, yeah. did I peak already? You know, in terms of like, yeah, you're like, for sure. Yeah, you're I like do drive and your ambition and just like, yeah, yeah you get, I'm getting you get more to the point and more where tired. You're, you're kind of want to like, it, like, okay, like I have all this drive. I need to keep getting better. Like I want to like get buffer. I want to like get better at like hobbies. <laughs> but then there's also that party that's like, it'd be nice to just like. Get on a get on a little raft and just go down river. It's like, know, I'm, just tired. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, I'm fucking tired. I'm yeah, tired. But relax. that's the thing. Like, like um, that's the theme of this. That's podcast not that's not our culture. Today. Like, our we're culture tired. is is gonna is is constantly improved, constantly consumed, yeah. constantly produced. We were just talking the other day about the obsession with reading nonfiction books. Like, oh my god! You always have to be. Oh yeah, we because like I felt like I since I started reading Dune, I was just like, man, this is nice to read fiction again. Oh, like, yeah, and then yeah. I, and then like I've been I read like the Great Gatsby and shit. <laughs> I re, I've been rereading like the classics oh, and stuff oh, nice. and like Grapes of Wrath and shit. And it's oh, like great. I'm like, yeah, actually, I mean, there's a I think I think there's like a time and place for nonfiction, you know. But then yeah. I feel like you've you feel like you've learned oh, a sufficient yeah. amount, and it's like, all right, <laughs> no, no, I, I read a ton of nonfiction. Um, I tend to do audiobooks for nonfiction, and then I read fiction because I, prose is something that you should consume yeah like, okay but to get even more specific self-help nonfiction. oh yeah yeah you know that. we're talking about like the lean like, like history, oh, history and stuff like you know what i'm saying the yeah. alan dulles thing that's like that's legitimate like that's like a story that Word. You're yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but that like sounds cool. but like self-help is just like oh, can we just God. stop like trying to improve all the time no you don't have to you don't have to constantly self-optimize yeah like, it's it's like, that's chill. actually a mental just disorder have, you're fine. <laughs> it's the same. It's the yeah. same as like someone with like uh, um, anorexia, you know, or body dysmorphia. It's that Fremont mentality. But I feel yeah, like it's yeah, hard yeah. to it's hard to sort of get away with that though. And like a lot of the people who are calling the shots in the spaces that we're in are like that. Oh yeah. yeah. So it's just like pressure that's getting like put onto you necessarily sure. yeah. too. Yeah. And, but some people, thing. I guess, like they just give in and then they like they have to. Mm. Let them well, sell. a lot of those and people don't people, have um, like optimization is all they have because they don't have like personalities, personalities or yeah. tastes or that like, is a, that is a personality good culture around them or they're, they're like, like I've been like, to f- like dude. <sighs> 
Okay, yeah. Oh what? What are you trying to say? It makes me so upset. Man. What are you trying to like, say? It's just like, like, it's just like that whole like nerd ass mentality where people are just like so obsessed with like getting the highest score. Yeah. yeah. You know, and stuff where they're like, I've gone to like 60 countries. It's like, oh, well, yeah. did you like enjoy them? Yeah. Like, did they I read, share? I read like, three books this month. Like the world. Jesus. Did you observe their culture? Yeah. Or did you just go to say like, oh, that's 45. That's number 46. Yeah. That's number yeah. 47. It's yeah. basically like in real life, like Xbox achievements. Basically, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's like why guys, Xbox pointless. achievements are actually those achievements are actually a a a, a genius piece of design. I think. Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, there was like, there was I like, would get that little thing, and I'd be like, Ooh, dude, dude. There were years. Like, there were years going. in my adolescence where I was obsessed with getting every achievement in a game I played. Oh my god. <laughs> I was never like that, but I did enjoy the achievements, but I was never like a big completionist. With I was games. obsessed with rushing for six touchdowns by JV. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Man? And varsity too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, I'm pretty well rounded. I'm a state golf championship. So, oh, uh, sick, dude. Damn. Damn. Dude, definitely. You, uh, you guys won state? Yeah, yeah, we did. Oh, you Damn. still golf like regularly? Not regularly, but if I if I went to the driving like I went to the driving range a couple weeks ago, I still got it. Watch nice. me go to Top Golf and Jacob just shanks everything. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. Yeah. If anything, I'd be like I'd be like ah, if I brought my own clubs here, I'd be fucking. Dude, Yo, honestly, yeah. that's something I never get tired of seeing people just yam it at Top Golf. Like people who are good, like, <laughs> I never I see get people tired. good, like like see people just good, just like send, like send it. I can I can kind of do that. I never nah. get tired. I've, I've never swung a golf club in my life. I what? Got, I've never won. Not even mini golf. Not even oh, mini golf. Yeah, but I've we never I've never like there's a Top Golf in San Jose. We should go. We should go. To go to San Jose, are you fucking hey, kidding let's me? Do God an, damn it. We could do an on site pod. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, on site pod at the top. That would be interesting. Top Golf is like one of those. Uh, that's one of those, like. We could do it, we could do it undercover. Uh, like, uh, you know, like uh, a client's coming into town yeah. or the team's coming from New York. We're actually going to go to Top Golf and then we're going to hit uh, the brewery. I'm, I'm convinced like the only reason Top Golf exists. That's like my association of Top Golf. My association is every girl on Hinge, it's their one video where they're doing something semi athletic. It's semi oh Top Golf. Yep. I was Dude. doing statistics somewhere for men <laughs> that, like, if, if you have a, one picture in your profile of you doing something vaguely athletic and increases your likes by like a significant margin. So if you have yourself yeah. like doing jujitsu or something or like playing soccer. What if you have a video of yourself rapping? Oh, that's how negative, would that do? bro. Ah, <laughs> like even if you're yeah. good, bro. Yeah. How do you feel about me? Wait, wait, wait. Sure, how do you feel about me rapping? Could like generally? Am I appropriating? Why does it matter what I think? That's true. Your half culture? Uh, <laughs> my cult? <laughs> wait, so, uh, wait, what, what? Oh. Well, just bring it back to the cornrows. I mean, uh, hip hop is another part of that, uh, you know, people are sensitive about, like, you know, white people encroaching on. Oh, well, that's why, it's like we were talking about earlier. If you're going to be a white rapper, you have to be so yeah, fucking good. So ridiculously good. So yeah. if you have cornrows, they need to be sick. That's why, like, that's fucking why fucking cornrows. Logic got eaten alive. That's why Logic, like, quit because J. Cole told him he sucks. And like, and then someone like Eminem has hey, like persisted so nice. on through the years. I mean, not good quality, but he still. Dude, is. Eminem's most recent song is so terrible. Dude, yeah, I, yeah. and like it was like topping the charts, and I was like, "This is just the only good part of this you ripped from like Steve an Miller. old song." Yeah, oh it's the Steve that Miller you already made. They, they sample Abracadabra by Steve Miller. Oh damn! Well, yeah. no, it's that, but then it's, and then it's he like it's like, the lyrics, guess, like I'm gonna reach in my bag, bruh. And dude, uh, and it literally ooh, starts dude. with like, "Guess who's back?" It's like this is just, oh, you're just no. redoing a song that you dude. It's like it's like we're talking about with Clay Thompson, like just go out on top. Stop. Dude, remember when he when, remember when he, when he dropped this. a diss track on Donald Trump? Oh, that was so pathetic. It was like his um spoken word. That's an awfully hot coffee pot. That's the oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um I I mean I I like Eminem uh his early career. I think it, it sucks though too because like his fans, I think the people who like you like Eminem at a certain point in your life. It appeals to a certain type of person, right? Like a young, right. angsty You're person. Angry. You probably have like a like some shit going on at home. Naturally. That, and it really, you feel like he relates to you. And that's really cool. And that's kind of why I like Eminem. But then like, you know, ideally you would like grow up and progress where that becomes yeah. like a cherished yet very compartmentalized part of your music taste. Incredibly car- compartmentalized. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's like, it's, it's like locked up in a safe like <laughs> box in my heart and that's cool. I can't even go back to old I can't, memory. I don't, I don't, I don't I need just, to. I, I, don't, I, I just sometimes because it's time. like, I just like the funny ones at least. Like the, yeah. like the, like some of the funnier ones. Not like, 
I was like, I'm listening to the Stan anymore, but I do like that song. But like, I mean, it's a good song, but it's like it had its its time. Remember, I mean, you told the story. I won't say the family member, but you told the story uh, that you were hanging out with the family member of ours, and he just kept listening to Kim, and then like he was a particularly disturbed family member, and you were like, I don't think you should be listening to this anymore. So there's a there's hey, a song there's a song there's a song on uh, arguably Eminem's magnum opus, Marshall Mathers OP, yeah, 2001. I'm not that's arguing. It's, that's his best for that's sure. Like, I feel like that's like yeah anyway um there's a song called kim in this album where it starts with eminem kissing his daughter goodnight and then there's a there's a sudden heel turn where he goes he starts talking to his wife and he's like sit down bitch you move again i'll beat the shit out of you yeah. and it's this whole song of just him screaming at her and saying like i fucking i told you i was gonna find out you cheated on me i'm gonna fucking kill you yeah and dude. he fucking like it's intense murders his wife Basically, yeah, and the, the last it. thing you hear in the song is him uh, killing her and then dragging her through a cornfield. Yeah, it's not pleasant. It's it's really like it's really uncomfortable. I think. And he just would listen to it at. Well, he was events. listening. I was like, bro, stop listening to the song. Like, stop, dude. Uh, he's it's like, he's like, oh, so, it's so good at, at like, family oh, events. Yeah. No, we were just hanging out. Once. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. One time, that made me laugh. It's still so crazy, but answer. like it'd be even crazier at like a cookout. With yeah, with, with <laughs> yeah, you know, like imagine playing a song like that with like, with like a girl in the car or something like that. Yeah, I so love, I love long this song. Yeah, did you did me so wrong, <laughs> <laughs> dude. That um, it's so, but it's so juvenile. So anyway, so it's like, yeah, it's just really like to disturbing. me, it's like like when I meet adults who are still. Like listening to Eminem, number one, listening to him, whatever, fine. But like, they still want that same type of content. Oh my God. It's just like, dude, you guys, it's one of those things, right? It's, it's like an artist, you gotta, you gotta yeah. kill the artist, basically. It's like, you gotta like, or they kill the artist, essentially. It's like, let this guy go. Let him change, really cute, maybe, man. you know? Yeah. And I feel like he needs to. Like, be an old man. He's 50. Rap about he's being really an old, old man. You he's can, really old. He's made cool, like, sentimental, reflective songs before. Like, who's I think Eminem should, like, transition. Yeah, he could just, you know, you could rhyme. But no, he's just yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, just oh like... Dude, the, be... uh, the, uh, the, like, the revival era where he was, like, doing, like, rap God. Remember Rap God? I oh. hated that oh, song. <laughs> <laughs> that song sucks. Ass, I hate bro. Rap, bro. the beat sucks. The fucking court, the hook sucks, dude. That was like sucks. <laughs> that was like that air, like that sucks. twenty. When did that come out? It's like twenty twelve or something. No, no, it was uh, it was yeah. like two thousand. It was two thousand like fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. Rap gone, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Well, it reminds me of that oh, other I'm rap. Good with this stuff. Yeah, I'm look it up. It reminds me of the other rap song that came out around that time that goes. Uh, had like Busta Rhymes on Look it or something. Now. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, but that's tight, though. That yeah, it is, is but it was just like this era time. of like fast like, rapping. This is the same era when Drake, uh, I mean, Drake did that song that's like, it may not mean nothing to y'all. But under, that's 2009, uh, huh? Forever. But yeah. understand, understand nothing, nothing was Yeah, because that was the same year. Yeah. And then like Eminem came on there and I remember like it blowing my mind in 2009. Dude, because that was a sick cult. Co- co- it still kind of is. It's still Dude, okay, Lil Wayne, Wayne, Drake, Eminem, and Kanye on yeah. one song. I, 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 the one mm. I've always disliked Lil About Wayne. LeBron. I've <laughs> disliked <laughs> Lil Wayne. Why, okay, wait, hold on. First of all, um, that album. What were we talking about? Which album? Twenty Eminem, Rap God. Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Was Rap 2013. God? Yeah, it was Rap oh, God. Hey, mm-hmm. uh, that was right. Uh, and then, <laughs> wait, why don't you like Lil Wayne? I don't know. It's like I never liked his. <laughs> yeah, it's like something about his delivery. Hey, yeah, very song. impish. I just don't like his impish nature. Yeah, he's like a little demon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's also too. It's just like I don't have like I don't know like the every time I've seen him in an interview, he's always just like glitzed out of his mind. Like, I mean, good for him. I uh, yeah. <laughs> I um. I re I but I when I re-listen to some of the songs like um what's that one called? A million, a Six million. foot, seven foot. Uh, yeah, yeah some oh, of that's his, a good one. Some of his lines are so fucking funny though. They're so yeah. clever. So there's dude. there's three little little Wayne songs I'm fine with. That's a Millie, of course. There's Lollipop, and then there's um, I love Lollipop. There's like bro. six foot seven, six Shiny eight. Shiny one of them. Uh, dude, that's, yeah, that's a sick song. Tight. Dude, Before, I remember them playing. I remember playing that. Uh, they they played that at like a high school Your dance. Your ninth grade dance. Yeah. yeah. And like that was before I unlocked my ability to truly dance. I don't know what I, at one point in my life, I just, it clicked and I just became a really good dancer, but that was before. And I just didn't know what to do. And I remember trying to dance with the girl to that song. And then like seeing all the much more ethnic kids just like grind it out. And I just could not do it. I, 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 yeah, I was, I froze. 
Really? Yeah, I What's was that? bad. What's well, that? I, I don't know. I was also like a, a chubby kid in ninth grade. You know what I mean? Well, like, I wasn't really doing any dance. My art dance. Nathan, you truly just... are an inspiration to, uh, <laughs> to, yeah. to the chubby kids growing up. <laughs> to chubby kids yeah. everywhere. Yeah. People yeah. look at you now. What, uh, what'd you like... do? When, when did you decide, like, when and how did you decide that you were like, fuck this? Oh, man. I think college. I, I remember getting into college and I'm like, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to be fat. I shopped in, in the Husky too. section I think one that last happens time. a lot. You see, yeah. I've seen a lot of people. I know a lot of people who lost weight after their first year of college. Like I, forever. Because well, so they're, they're like, I, should I, I have use, access to a like, rack? Cool. Well, I guess well, I your, your parents just feed you like bagels and cream well, cheese. Yeah. 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 You know, you start eating yeah. better. Which is a bananas way to start your morning. That's like five <laughs> servings of bread <laughs> and like processed ass, like nasty, poor quality. It's not like you're getting like good dairy either. This is like the Phillips cream cheese. If you comes in a block. If you eat cereal for breakfast, just stop right right now yeah if you're an adult eating and cereal your for life like, will be like on, at least buddy. a little better i love cereal i know i like, do too, all love cereal, but do not eat it every but like day cereal breakfast. now is relegated to like if i'm it's a treat. you know if you're like yeah if you're like high as shit at like one in the morning yeah. or something it's like, like eating ice cream to me yeah but cereal for bread like that's the first thing you do and if you do eat like raisin bran or something don't I fuck even the raisin bran's terrible i know but don't eat like baby yeah got that whole grain yeah but yeah i agree i eat like oatmeal that's basically like granola all the way in yeah it's just like granola with milk you guys remember like when you were like young and you're reading about like how to eat healthy you're like like best superfoods or like not superfoods. really i was yeah. just i was just like mom well, i guess you were like protein. you weren't too pro- like close to like silicon valley that's where like this is like the ground zero of that optimization movement oh, yeah. the most of that that reached me was just the whey protein my dad would always you make guys, fun of me for it uh, you guys wait what, wait, what? <laughs> I, I would start drinking whey protein my dad would be like oh you think you're gonna get jacked from this huh that's such a dad, that's such <laughs> a dad like, when, up, when dads man. do that they're like low-key insecure yeah. and they're just like i don't well, want you to exceed because because, because they're afraid of they're afraid of their sons becoming stronger than them. I could. Yeah, I think you should <laughs> want that. Yeah, you should. I could definitely. My son's gonna be dad. fucking Fade Rotha. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. <laughs> Paul, Paul Trades and yeah. shit. Yeah, I could beat up my dad even though he's a cop just because he's like, he's almost 60. So I'm just larger than him. Sweep kick him real quick. Yeah, I'm just Sweep like, the leg, bro. Like, take his leg I mean, I kind of get my dad's point. If you just drink it and don't work out, yeah, it's not going to do anything. Oh, you weren't obviously. working out? No, I was. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I was. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But I think his, impl- his implication is like, oh, you think you're just going to get jacked from drinking that? And I was like, no. Dude, it's going to help. You but. guys know that supplement store, GNC? Yeah. yeah. How the fuck are they still open? I always thought they were GNC. Because like everything in there is like $70. Yeah, like, uh, exactly. How are they open? You can buy it somewhere else. How are they open? Dude, have com. you have you go to the gym, right? Have you met those people or their entire life is that? Yeah, and they're aware of bodybuilding.com or just yeah, like websites yeah. that are way cheaper and well, way better. Okay, true, the only true, the true, only true. deal they that get they get you they get high school. I bet it's high school. It's high, school. high school. Absolutely. Absolutely. The only yeah. time I go yeah. to GNC in the mall. is yeah. yeah, it's in the mall. There's <laughs> yeah. one there's one in in a shopping center near my house and that's where I go and get creatine. Because like the creatine there is pretty high quality and it's mm. not that much more. And I don't want to have to wait to like order it online. Word. So I, just get it. I get that. Um, but like one time I went and I was like Man. thinking about switching up the kind of creatine that I use. Because that's the only supplement I take. I stand behind it. Everyone I remember creatine. hawking creatine, creatine one shit, time. Bro. I was trying to pass a drug test for a job and I was just fucking down in creatine that What week. the f- Dude, that is some bullshit myth you got online. There's no <laughs> way was, creatine yeah. is going to yeah. like prevent Did it you. work? You just blew up your kidney. I passed it. Oh, uh, yeah. But I also didn't smoke that much. So I might have passed it anyways. Yeah, you were going to. Yeah, dude. But uh, yeah, so I went in there, and this this is a uh, this is indicative of a lot of uh, different stores. It's not just GNC, but the people there don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because like I saw this creatine that was like the standard GNC one, and I saw yeah. this other one that was like fifteen dollars more expensive, and I asked the guy, and it was just this brand, this sixteen year old Filipino kid. We're in Daily City. Everyone's Filipino. Um, and like, I should have known that he wasn't going to know, but I was like, why is this one more expensive? And he looked at me and he was just like, I think it absorbs faster. And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, and then I realized I had caught him in a bullshit lie. Like he just said that to sound like he knew what he was talking about. You're like, what am I doing? And he was just like, uh, you know, I honestly, I don't know. So I just bought the cheaper one. But if, his, yeah. if, if he was even a little knowledgeable and he was just like, oh, this one actually, I, I don't know. Uh, he could have just read the label. They I, put the I, benefits on the label. Don't. <laughs> he could have played it off. You know, he really could have been, been like, oh, and, uh, no loading time. Yeah. <laughs> no loading phase. Yeah. That's Something. like when you go to Best Buy and you're like, what, why is this one better? He's like, and they just literally read it for you. It's like, bro, <laughs> I my brother, uh, Jesse, is one of those guys who would like go quiz them. Basically oh, my on God. The cameras. Yeah. <laughs> he Shout out, knowledge. Jesse. I know you listen. We Dude, that you. reminds me. I think I texted you guys about this. I went. I had to go return something at Best Buy this week, and um, <sighs> the most disinterested 16-year-old girl helped me return this thing. 
and I just really, it just made me really pissed off at like just teenage workers. I don't know why yeah, you weren't. You're you're mad. She wasn't jumping for joy to fucking return your <laughs> stupid fucking tech item. No, you no, know, this girl not, cares. She was paid like nine dollars. Well, hold on, hour. it's not. No, it's not dude, about San Francisco her, minimum wage is like twenty bucks. No, it's not about her. Look, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, first of all, so if she's making twenty bucks, holy cr- holy Christ. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not expecting her to be like fucking excited to do this. But she was just doing like she plugged it in and was like. Was like mm, you're still logged in or whatever, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, and she's I, like, I, "You're logged in." I'm like, "All right, well, I'll log it out." She's like, "You're supposed to log out." I'm like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll log out." And she goes, "Well, it says no signal." So, oh my and I'm God. like, "Well, I think you need to plug an HDMI." Like, she's just like fucking stupid. I get it's it. not about Again, like she's be happy. It's just like. Just, just scan the thing. Give me my money. No, so I can no, leave. no, no, no. Like, I get it. I get it because, like, okay. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It works. Jake, just if you're being a little, you. a little Karen, only a little bit, but I get it because you walk into she retail. She had like ten piercings on her face too. You walk into real estate. I know I sound old. Jesus, right now, it's like but Nebraska like, boomer coming out here hardcore. <laughs> Jesus, what else? But like that, it just it just completed her. Was mood. She, like she, too she was just like too? wanted to be so like, like go to church. She <laughs> wanted to be like yeah. emo goss. She was like, nah, your display doesn't. You know, no, I I get it though no, because no, like no. I hate walking Fuck. into a retail establishment and then them making you feel like like you're you're imposing. You're like them. unwelcome. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was like, about to care dude, now. I was about to be like, do you? Is there someone who can like do this for me? Yeah, I was about to say that because there's a lot of competent people around. Who it was like, just a sixteen-year-old girl. Just, you know, what I learned though. I feel like, girl. I mean, it, it, like, what helps sometimes with these interactions, like, if you know what they should do, if you tell them, yeah, like they'll do it, kind of. You but know that was I mean? my problem. Just help them. A sometimes. little, a little positive feedback never. But that was know, like I was going constructive into constructive feedback. I, I was going say. into a I tried. a concert once for Baby Metal and Death Clock. Mm. Baby, <laughs> Baby Metal, <laughs> Death Clock. Baby Metal being a um, uh, a J-pop group with. Bl- like heavy metal beats basically it's like mm-hmm. these three girls and it's like a heavy metal band but it's like j-pop vocals it's pretty tight that's cool. and then death clock being the fictional band oh i do metal wait i think close. i know baby metal they had a song in a they're sick and, they're, and they're I, was, around, yeah. I was like coming <laughs> i was walking in with a screenshot of my ticket and then the mm-hmm. girl scanning the ticket was like a young girl she's like she was like 18 or whatever she's like oh it's not gonna work it's not gonna work and i'm like are you sure and she's like it's not gonna work and i was like why don't we just try it yeah, and then yeah, it tried yeah. and she's like oh well, she's yeah. like, what the fuck and I was like alright thanks see ya yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you know just like oh did you do this hey yeah, do there that you go. to be fair <laughs> I tried the, with this girl when she said oh you're not you're logged in I went oh really okay well I'll, I'll log out and then she goes well there's no display and I go well there's no HDMI cord and then she just went <sighs> Have you, ever, <laughs> have you have you worked retail before? Yes, I have. Remember, I've worked, I, I've worked yeah, worse in retail. Like, remember, remember, I know. I've actually only worked food. I've worked actually, pizza. That's, that's worse than retail. I remember maybe like ten years ago. It was like I were at a family gathering. This dude's like, "There's no, retail." What I love about retail is it's a great profession that will just make you hate everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you do, bro. I yeah. worked at the campus bookstore at my university, UC Santa Barbara. Go Gauchos! And um, fucking. Uh oh yeah, and then like, dude, there's something about working there that would just like <laughs> you would be in such a bad mood <laughs> when you're there. Yeah. All of us, like all of us, would just be in a pissed off mood. And if a customer ever came in, we're just like, oh, fuck, yeah. dude. Yeah. So I kind of get it because it's just like Every you know, you don't care about this job. Like they you don't. don't no, they don't you're give just a there. Fuck. No, I feel like I would. I worked at a uh, Rubio's uh, in Ceremony. Oh. What's Rubio's? Rubio's is like <laughs> Chipotle before Chipotle. It's like. It's like yo, shout out Rubio's, bro. I, I always enjoy. I thought I, I like love, it more than Chipotle. I liked. I like. I love Rubio's. We'd go. Uh, we go out to track meet sometimes. Yeah, that's yeah. great. But I was working there, and like I, I remember, <laughs> I remember like it, it's like forty five minutes before we close, not close to closing time. Forty five minutes this is a big chunk of time, and someone came in, and I was livid. And I, at the time, I was like a supervisor. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was like, I was oh, there you go. Hey, hey, yeah, go, baby. I was a CPR. Hey. I fucking climbed the corporate ladder. wherever yeah. he is. Yeah. Nathan Hernandez. But I walked back general. and I was just like, "Fuck!" There's a fucking customer. And then one of the like 16 year old kids <laughs> looked up at me and it was just like, "Yeah, we're open." <laughs> like, you know, yeah, like, is this just coming to get what? food? That's what we do. And I was like, I looked at him. I was just like, because he had just started. <laughs> You know, like he's not he's James. Like, he's yet. Like and I was like, you're "Oh like, yeah, you're right." Like that is that's why, why we're here. <laughs> There's no reason for me to be this upset. But you're just so over. Oh hey, my god, that reminds they me. would do they would do Taco Tuesdays oh, at no. Rubio's, oh, where you, you could get like a dollar fish taco. And um, we live in an area where there's a lot of cheap people, so they would come in <laughs> and they would have like they would have like their kids birthday party there. So there'd be come people coming in and be like, "We'll take forty five fish tacos." 
And you're just there, and like the the oil in that grill is getting disgusting because you can't clean it out at a regular interval because you're just dropping fish after fish after fish. And I remember just like seething with hatred at every single person yeah. that was coming into that yeah. Taco Tuesday. Yeah. And the fucking oil would come up and it'd bite your arm. I think it has still had like oh, a little... Oh, that's the worst. I when still the oil have like pops a little, up. Yeah, this thing. This thing right here is from fucking... Damn. Like that reminds me one time I was uh, opening pizza. I was a waiter at this point. And, um, nice. For like mm. the first Wait, hour... pizza at waiters? That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's back when... And whenever I say I was a waiter at pizza, those that's people's reaction. They, they went, you could dine in. Oh, uh, yeah, because they're only to go now. Back when we were a real country. Do you remember when we were at uh, Joshua Chain we had Pizza Hut? That was the worst fucking pizza oh, I've ever had in my very life. Very bad. That pizza has taken a huge fall off yeah. ever since I left. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I was opening Pizza Hut, <laughs> and uh, I opened at 10, and uh, we get it all ready. And then it's like 11. There's no customers yet. And I'm thinking, like, this is fucking great. And then uh, someone realized I never unlocked the door. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Well, so I have no oh. idea how many people came in after church or whatever. And it was just like, I guess pizza is good today. Wait, Damn. what? Sorry. Yeah, so I got to just chill for like an hour and no customers. It's just great. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Which I didn't mind because to me, like I had the biggest like bum rushes ever one morning as a waiter. It was ridiculous. And I made $80 in tips. Damn. So, Some jobs are, are better when it's, when it's busy. Yeah. I used to work at um, Walmart. <laughs> That's true. It flies by more. It flies yeah, by yeah. And I loved it when it was busy there. Because otherwise, you just remember that you're yeah. in a Walmart. You're in a Walmart. You worked at Walmart? Oh, the, yeah. The, the oppressive about... environment of a Walmart. That was when I... Lights, yeah. Those, the disorganized ass shelves. Yeah. The that, people. The, that was the uh, <sighs> beginning of my country music uh, taste, hey. honestly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd be I'd, driving. I'd be listening to K-Tom, the local country music channel. Hey, just well, being like, fuck. When, 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 you, when you were at the Walmart, was there, a, uh, was there a wall in the back that displayed the, the, the stock price? No. I've seen that in Walmart's, really? in yeah. Walmarts before, and it's like supposed to be a motivating factor for the employees. Dude, I would not care Jacob, oh. guys, some, <laughs> I know. some Walmarts, have you guys seen those videos where they do like those morning like that? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Dude, 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 my, my brother uh, had a teacher in high school who used to work at Walmart, and That's he would tell rough. stories about like the, these culty moments where they would all like do like a Walmart prayer at the beginning of the Jacob, day. Jacob, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a video. And yeah, yeah, please, and please send it It's one guy, one of them gets so pumped up. Like, yeah. He's like the man. Manager, he's like, yeah, we go. Who we are? Yeah, Dude, so, so Wait, like, he's like, ah, the, he starts beating his chest. The people, like the guy at the top of the food chain at uh, Walmart, like the Whoa. general manager, hey, head honcho. Yeah, the head honcho at Walmart. But no, the guy who runs the like the the top manager at each individual Walmart yeah. makes like three hundred thousand dollars a year. They make a lot of money. Whoa. I hope so. They're fucking yeah. not paying the other people any money. It's, so it's, it's a really like stressful job. I worked at. I never worked at a uh, um, Walmart, but I did work at Home Depot. The Home Depot Pro, which is, there's not that many of them. Oh, there think. was a Lowe's. Uh, there was a Lowe's float at Pride. Oh no! Oh, yay! Way to go, Lowe's! Yeah. I love to see what I, I. I just keep remembering, reminiscing on what Lowe's has done for the gay community. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yay, Lowe's! Good job, Lowe's! Way to go, Lowe's! Thanks. But uh, I remember working, uh, and then they told me that uh, someone, one of the managers, told me that I was like, "Hey, man, like, you know, you go work your way up." And Phil, who was a very nice, mm-hmm. very, very obese man who ran that uh, Home Depot, he was making like three hundred thousand dollars a year. I was like, "Oh, holy shit!" And he started as like, you know, like a clerk. He was like yeah. a success story for Home Depot. But no way in hell I was going to stay there long enough to ever even get close to that. But <laughs> I don't think yeah. it would take that long. I worked at a... If job. you're competent. But then I, like who's, you know, the if you're really, really, really the competent. The annual salary range Depot. for a store manager is... Store manager, not supervisor, right? Oh, wait. Or what's... Yeah, what is it? Guess. Oh, for a Walmart? A yeah, single I'm, store or a region? Store manager. Uh, one hundred eighty thousand. That's very close, actually. Oh, yeah. what is it? Uh, the range is from ninety to one hundred seventy. The mm. total pay. Hold on, total pay. Oh, mm. oh, incentives. That's why they show you the two twenty to three hundred and thirty thousand. Those are some bonuses yeah. based on that Black Friday there day. You know oh, but your saying? base salary is closer to like one. 
one hundred. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. thought that I thought as much because like a lot of people like when they say they make you know that's like their total wait wait comp. does, total comp, does yeah. the total comp include like the Walmart money they give them or what? Yeah, I don't know. Because don't they give <laughs> don't they give like the uh, poor people Walmart money? Stops here. So that, yeah. <laughs> my curiosity is, is, has been exhausted. Yeah, yeah, yeah fuck like Walmart. I worked at Dollar Tree for two weeks. Eesh. Dude, holy worst shit. job shit. ever. Yeah, I can only oh, dude. Imagine. Wait, so they so oh yeah, so they save money at um, Dollar Tree and Dollar General and etc. But they basically, you know, you ever realize there's like one person working there? Like maybe yep. two? Yeah, there's not a lot. <laughs> there was like That's three of money. There was That's three of there. us, and I was by far the youngest one. I, it was my summer before college, and I worked with a, a, like a 40 year old, some guy, year old guy who, nice. um, he, while we were just like stocking shelves, and like he'd like try to like get real with me, like try to like get, get close to me, and he Ooh. would just talk about like how, how he and his like ex like were oh. addicted to like heroin and like we're oh, doing like yeah, meth I mean, in the naturally. shower together and stuff. And oh. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, I'm just trying to like, Jesus I'm just trying to make some cash before I get to college, and I'm just like, cool, dude. Yeah, no, anyway, let's that- stack this mac and Cheese. When you're that deep and you're so filled with regret, yeah. the, the, his yeah. only way to make any sort of amends is to like try to be close to people to tell them, please do not that stuff make is the haunting, same mistakes. bro. It yeah. is very haunting. I, I don't remember. really... I just had a really bad like superiority complex when I worked those jobs. Like my manager and stuff, I'd always just be like, I don't know, you're kind of, in my eyes, as like a 16-year-old a failure. So like how, how how do I how do I come to terms with that but like and like respect you? Jesus, I don't Christ. like I don't. I mean yeah, I mean look, if you're 40, you're I'm working at the Dollar honest. Tree. Something it probably happened. In this I, case, <laughs> hardcore drug addiction. Um, yeah, in other people's happened. cases, they may have been born a little impaired. My That's opinion was like similar fair. to Nathan's when I was at Walmart, where it was like. Like the managers, I was like, cool, bro, but like I don't want to do what you have to do because it's the same oh, thing. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, I started as an associate. Yeah, just like yeah, you guys. And I, and was like, I, was I like, guess to be yeah, fair, my nice. Oh, you know what was haunting though? Okay. What? In my orientation group was this guy. At Walmart? Uh, yes. Okay. Who, who was like, I don't know, like in his 23 or something, right? And we were all just talking about like introducing ourselves, et cetera. And he was like, because <laughs> I worked at Walmart the summer before I started uh, college. And he was saying that he's like, yeah, I'm here because um, I graduated from college. I graduated from uh, Cal State Fullerton. And uh, I don't know, I guess just people aren't really hiring right now. Damn. I was like, terrifying. Wait, oh, what? Dude, what year? Fuck, 2011. Oh, it was man. shortly after the fallout of like, because that yeah, I mean, yeah, the financial you, fallout. Have to, you have to keep in mind, like people right now who are like, like older millennials, like grad, they graduated university right around the one that happened yeah yeah Mm -hmm. like so a lot of them have that's why like the gen x thing kind of what you're talking about too they got fucked by that yeah like that's when they were like hitting their stride they should have been in their career and like oh like everything just collapses yeah and basically just resets yeah yeah that's rough and it's it's uh (laughs) but it's you know it's it's funny because a lot of those people um those recession dudes uh a lot of interesting endeavors came from them. I feel like that was the beginning of the era where like people were going harder on like breweries. People were like making those, uh, people were making like, there was more of a push for like artisanal stuff. So like they would start companies that do like, uh, you know, like, um, like we make a, like a canned gin and tonic, you know what I mean? Like, or like we, uh, they, they <laughs> yeah. would start one of those, uh, uh, one of those like, uh, places that like, has a burger that's $16 for no reason, but it has yeah. like aioli on it. So that's how they justify <laughs> it. I feel like it was sort of like when um, we kind of, as a nation, where it's like hard punished for being so materialistic. Yeah. So then people started gearing towards the experiential after that because like yeah. nobody had things anyway. Like you yeah, yeah, buy yeah, exactly. yeah. You couldn't yeah. buy stuff. So then it just became this whole like, yeah, it, that, that's the, like, um, oh, the experience. People like home that, that, that's the, that's the kids. Millennials can't buy houses because they're buying too much avocado toast era. Oh yeah, Jesus Christ! Like, it's like oh, there's terrible bunch of experiences. But that wait, was also on, really quick. Can I cap in my my comment about managers real quick? Sure. Uh, obviously, I, I come off sound like a dickhead, but also I just want to say there were managers that I respected. But the problem is, is when a manager like at Dollar Tree, I was just a stalker, right? I just stock stuff on the shelves. So I would look, I would put I would put earbuds in, and then this like regional manager would come in, and every single time he came in and saw me with the earbuds in, he'd be like, "Hey, take those out." Has zero impact on what's getting done. This man just wants to like. Yeah, he wants some to control. Sort of He's a regional like, manager. Yeah, man. he's just like, this is all I have is my power over this fucking eighteen year old kid, 
who in four years is going to like be in a better position than me <laughs> or I ever will be in my life. But right now, <laughs> I'm better than him, so fuck him. Anyways, yeah. that's why I hate those people. <laughs> you, know my, you know what else those people did? Uh, those those recession kids. I feel like that was the beginning of uh, a lot of like Renaissance Fair type people. A lot of like steampunky kind of people. <laughs> I was at a I was at Treasure Fest, which is uh, which is like Treasure Island, which is a, a garbage heap that's connected to. It's a fest. There's a festival on the island. Yeah, there's the Treasure Island <laughs> Trash go, Fest. You go on there. It is it is a fucking garbage pile. Like you have you have to get <laughs> off of the the Bay Bridge in like yeah. a really weird way that like loops. I thought around. it was called oh, yeah, Yerba Buena. Scary. Island. Isn't no, it Yerba no, Buena? there's two. There's Yerba Buena and there's Treasure. The Island. Garbo Yerba Fest. Buena. Yeah, it's awful. But you go there Stinky and it's fest. like, it's like there's a bunch of like <laughs> concrete buildings, but like yeah. there's a little strip and then they do like a, they do like a, a, you know, festival where there's mm. like booze and people are selling stuff. You can like people, there's like thrift clothes, there's vintage stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was a terrible mistake to go because I went with my two-year-old and my buddy Christian, shout out Christian once again. <laughs> hey, Christian. And my five-year-old and my two-year-old kept walking up to the booze and almost knocking everything down and then like <laughs> escaping from the little cart that I put him in. I love that guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's great, but he is a force of fucking nature. And I'm like, dude, I can't have you in crowds. And he's like overstimulated by the crowd. So he's just like... He's what going, was the fest for? He's just it's like it's up. like a fest. It's like any other like street festival. You know, like people stuff? are selling stuff. Okay, but I went there and um um I went to uh, there was a little puppet show, but the puppet show was like ran by like steampunky like the kind of people that would have been at the Renaissance Fair. You know what Word. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like one of you is in a very open relationship. Like one of you, they're all vaudevillian. They're all shit. they're all vaudeville. Like <laughs> yeah. they're all hello hello, and I'm like. Like the puppet show, like the people running the puppet show, there was a, a weird sexual aura to them, an Dude, odd I mean, horniness, who? and I, each other. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's drama kids. It's, it's drama kids. It's like it's like drama kids. School. Yeah, like now they the, fuck each other as forty year olds. The nerdy horny kids who are doing this, but it's a puppet show for children, and I'm like. I, like the vibes are too contradictory That's for me. So weird. But like yeah. the kid isn't. The kids aren't it's picking like, up on it. Ooh, that. Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> yeah. Dumpty it's fell the same the kind of Humpty horniness. Humpty Dumpty fell on my cock. You see at the the Renaissance <laughs> Fair, like when they're serving you guys beer and they're just like, "Oh, spank me, daddy." And it's like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Give me my beer. <laughs> my fucking you made beer. me wait in this inefficient ass line. Oh. So Nathan and I. <laughs> Nathan and I went to the Renaissance Fair once. With Mark. Uh, Shout out, Mark. Shout out, Mark. And my brother. On mushrooms. And my very angry wife. And we hyped up the... the, There's this guy swallowing swords who's actually phenomenal. He's amazing. And these nerds in the crowd weren't like willing to give him a, like a clap. And we, so we, uh, being on shrooms, were just like incredibly loud. Just yeah, like, like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, I imagine think, like dead silence and just three yeah, guys huddled yeah. in their corner. Just, oh! That Why was so much fun. Why would the nerds not appreciate me and that. my brother and like Mark, we're like great. the little peanuts Why did the nerds not there? like it? That feels like something. No, they were just like, like, people were just like clapping normal, but we were oh, like hyping like, this uh, guy uh, up. Well, I feel like, I also think like nerds are like, Critical of everything. They're like, like yeah, hard no, to, I hard actually could tell on that story. Hmm. That. Yeah. I've seen better. It's yeah. just like, oh, yeah. shut up. Uh, another funny thing about that, we ran into our cousins. Like a giant group of our cousins were hanging out there too. And like that was the day that I learned that I have like a like, large swath of our family <laughs> who likes the Renaissance they Fair. They love the Renaissance <laughs> Fair. Danny goes every year. Shout out, Danny. Yeah, I guess nerds are the people that would be like, mm, actually, actually, so, no, yeah, I feel like, of course, all impressive. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, like ner- nerds are the kind of people that would like look up how it works. He's like, well, actually, you know, this is how he does it, and it's not that yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. They're the it's nice to know how they do it, but, like, yeah. I yeah. think, I dude, oh, my God, I hate, fucking hate those people. Like, when there's a magic mm. trick and they're trying to, like, say out loud what's going on. Oh, yeah. dude. And Confine like, is back. It's just like, let, dude, let us lose lot. ourselves in the... It's illusion. called the magic show. Yeah. yeah. It's real. Know, it's real we fucking... We know magic isn't real. So stop yeah, trying yeah, to, like, know. blow our minds. Just, just we know it's a trick. Let me have a fun with this illusion. Yeah. It's it's funny because we were on mushrooms, but we took too many. Uh, or at least you guys did. I feel Classic like you guys mistake. had a much more negative. Uh, so at one point, Mark was sitting down, <laughs> oh yeah, I pale about this. as a sheet, and like he's pale as hell, and he's wearing this like pirate shirt <laughs> with a coat. <laughs> he looked so ghoulish, <laughs> so just like. <laughs> And it drenched like, in sweat. Yeah, that reminds me. Someone commented and called Mark the whitest person he's ever seen. Wait, <laughs> <last week. laughs> so, so Mark, I I turned to him 
And then when I noticed that he was like in trouble, it's like I turned to him and he's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like his eyes are all sunk. Damn, he really is. And he's sweating. No, bullets. we took too many streams and it's it's hot as fuck. Because so this place is in Casa de Fruta. <laughs> and it Where's is, that? Which it's like near Gilroy, which is the Where's central that? part of California, which is okay. very, very hot. Not not coastal, so it's more inland yeah. than like yeah, inland Monterey's. central California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh and it was a horribly run Renaissance fair, like horribly. Yeah, I mean Nathan and I spent the first forty five minutes waiting in line and food and just laughing at how horribly run this place because you waited in line to tell the people what you want and then you paid for it and they gave you a piece of paper saying what you bought and then you go wait oh, in another yeah. line <laughs> to tell to give to the sandwich maker. Yeah. to then hand you the sandwich when the cashier could have easily <laughs> handed the paper to the sandwich yeah. maker. Uh, they're, they're unnecessarily making you the middleman. Yeah. It was reason. it was really poorly run. You just wait two hours for no reason? Yeah, and then it's like we wait 45 minutes. They don't display their we prices. We paid like, yeah, they don't. They we don't, paid like, no we paid like $18 for a tri-tip sandwich. Fucking two pieces of meat and like a roll that you got at Costco. They straight uh, up take it out of the fucking bag. It's uh, <laughs> they didn't even try. Infuriating. It's not toasted. It's just like here. Yeah, we went again, and uh, well, once again we ran into our cousins. I didn't go like, this time. But he did not did go. Hey. Um, uh, but like we went this time, and then I got the turkey leg. But the turkey leg was fucking nauseating. It's gross. After a minute, you eat that. It's like a giant turkey leg, which is like the yeah. quintessential Renaissance fair food. Yeah, that's cool. After no, but you got four cool. bites into this thing. And it's fucking gross. It's gristly. It's filled with like little bones. And Ew. it's like, Ew. you only get, you can like, uh, there's a reason why at Thanksgiving Maybe you switch authentic. it up. You get some white meat, you get some dark meat. When it's all just the leg, you realize how like unappealing turkey is as Turkey's a bird. Turkey's gross, bro. It's, it's dry. It's but, like, but, but was it authentic? Is that how it was back then? I doubt they had that much food in the back in actual renaissance. I but doubt if they, they did, was it all shitty like, like that? Their version of that is like a saltine cracker. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, like, like, it's like a banquet for them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, Jesus. You think these starving ass? True. Okay, was it really the food or was it you also observing other people who were eating the food? It's gross. As you, the same food as you. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm it's, one it's, of them. It's a little bit of, yeah, it's a little bit I love seeing how like, much, nerds. Um, huh? like how nerds eat is kind of gross. Dude, no, they every, get, every dude, every single person at the Renaissance Fair looks like they're in an open relationship. Every. <laughs> <laughs> like, so what does that look though? Describe that look. That look is just like, like <laughs> nerdy, kind of pale, kind of like, like one, mm. one part of their face is much larger. They either have really big ears or like really big teeth or like really big eyes. Yeah. Can I ask you something about the girls? In. There's no bitches at the really? Renaissance Fair. There is, they are all gross. No bitches. Don't go. And if there is, they they they're like they, they there's have, like an aura to them because yeah. of how much attention all the dorks uh, can get. Uh, There'll be I like was, some girl, like some like like you know, perfectly fine, like looking, normal, like normal looking girl. But there. And they're, just like dude, they're just like oh, you're, if you're yeah. dude, if you're a yeah. six, you walk in, you're a Renaissance Fair eight. And like, it's like there's hot, people, it's, yeah. there's people like there's guys dressed up as knights, like handing you flowers and stuff like that, which I think is, is kind of cute. It's like being a hot dog in the grocery store versus at a baseball game. Uh, Remember oh, last time wow. we're at the Renaissance Fair together and I told that lady to shut up. right uh, before yeah. <laughs> She was drunk because also the other annoying thing about the Renaissance Fair is everyone is very fucked up. Yeah. Everyone is fucked They're Wasted. Up. Yeah. Wasted. So this lady was trying to give us advice on how to take photos with these women that were dressed up like in ancient Chinese garb, which we thought was interesting. Yeah, we wanted, to, and we were we were in costumes too. Yeah, um, that we hastily purchased before, uh, and we wanted to pose with them. We were taking a photo, and this lady was just off to the side, and she just kept like saying stuff like, "Why? Why did you stand right there? Make them stand right there!" Yeah, and I was yeah. just trying to be cool. I was like, "Oh, it's a, yeah, it's like cool, cool, cool." And then she was like, she just kept going, dude. She was like, "Why don't you go over there?" Huh. And I just snapped, dude. We were leaving anyways. I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> she got so mad. I was, she got hella mad. She was just like, you don't got to be a fucking asshole. About it. I was like, we're, I think we're good. Like, <clears throat> shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, it's kind of fun to snap at people in public. I'm gonna yeah, be honest. A little bit. Like, once you just boil over. I don't know. It's, it's been a long time since I really snapped at someone in public. I'm I pretty, mean, obviously I'm to a certain cute. level. Like, don't yeah. get too carried away with it, but. <laughs> the other dude the other day um this um 
that whenever when someone tries to confront me in the street, uh, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because I was like, I was walking with uh, my yeah, kids. You're right. I was walking with my kids, and my yeah, kids right. ride their little scooters. Yeah. And like, we got to the crosswalk, and they know to stop, uh-huh. and then we look both ways. And then they went, but I was like a little farther behind than mm-hmm. like I think this lady thought was acceptable. So she drives up and she was, she's of course an old white lady because who else confronts people in the streets like that? She was just like, <laughs> she looked at me and I could tell in her eyes that like she was, she thought what she was going to say to me was going to like infuriate me. She yeah. was just like, you should not be that far away from your children in a crosswalk. And like her husband, who is eight, is like ninety as well. Like looks over and it's just like, and they're ready for me to like verbally fence them. them in some way. And then I looked her right in the face and I was like, "Hey, when you're right, you're right." That's also nice. a great move. That's Thanks, also guys. a power hey, move. Hey, for thank sure. you, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna try to be a little bit more careful in the future. And she was like, "Because uh, they well, almost, they she was almost flabbergasted don't know what to do. that I yeah. was not initiating conflict back yeah. at her." People are yeah. so used to that. Yeah, and because, I was like, "Hey, you know what? You know, God bless you. Thanks yeah. for letting me know." Because you and could she have was been like, like oh, "You should not be driving." Like you could have said that. I know. Yeah. But you know, Which, you know. in the past, in the past, when people have not about kids, but in the past, when like people have like yelled at me from a car, sometimes I would have like gave it back at them because I, I feel like that's yeah. what they're really going for. But I just, I was just like, "Okay, ma'am." You're, you're right. And then she drove off, and then I did not think about it again until yeah. just now. I've been trying really hard to uh, to just let stuff go. It's it's tough. Yeah. I'm, st- I'm starting off with, like, go. loud cars on the street, which for me is a big challenge because I live right next to Oracle Park, and just oh, shit gets yeah. wild. And it gets just, really there's loud. a lot of douches. And every time I hear fucking Dom- Dominic Toretto outside my fucking window, it Oof. just makes me go, God. I thought that too until I drove my first Charger. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, I get it. That car has forever been ruined for me by being in the military. By GIs, <laughs> yeah, because every fucking yeah, take uh, your bonus would, and go buy one right now. Yeah, every <laughs> Marine would go and get one, and but they'd get it at like you know like eighteen percent interest. Like it's how like, valid are these uh, like memes about like the military about like it, are Chargers really that consistent? Very consistent. <laughs> I was I was also I I also thought that was like a funny bullshit meme, but like everyone gets. Do they all get like a predator? And then like, some like some of them window. would get like Avengers. You know what I mean? Remember those <laughs> shitty those Dodge Avengers. That well, are kind of like oh, I thought you were gonna say they got Avengers stickers on their window. No, I was no, like, no. no. Remember when fucked. we would like, uh, what's the number one indicator that this person sucks? And it's like if they had like a Deadpool sticker on the back of their car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Deadpool three's coming up. Uh, I heard it's really bad. Really? Really? Yeah, I, I heard it's pretty bad. How? It's, it's not out yet. Because like it's like pre screenings and stuff like that. Like I think critics critics are seeing it. Oh, okay. Right? I don't know. I I'm. I mean, you I'm know gonna go Dead- watch the movie. I'm gonna go see <laughs> yeah. it too. Yeah, I don't know. You know, you know what Deadpool is, and uh, I wouldn't mind a third time of it. I'm Ryan Whatever. Reynolds. Look at me. I'm breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. After two hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, after it's so quirky and like, funny. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, that reminds me. I went and saw a Quiet Place. Dude, that sound effect was so. Oh. oh. <laughs> I went and saw a Quiet Place day one yesterday. Oh my god. And uh, a cat- you're the only person in America who saw I that. Forgot, movie. I that forgot. That theater was a Quiet Place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, a cat is a main character in the movie. Oh no. And, Garfield. Uh, I'm sure you were sure we're watching. Garfield yeah. Jacob. Oh my yeah, god. it's voiced by Chris Pratt. Oh my god. That's so a, that'd be a funny crossover. Tired. I'm so fucking tired of Chris Pratt. Chris, yeah, Chris like, Pratt. Get the fuck out of here, Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Yeah. Chris anyway. Pratt's uh he was good on Parks and Recs. Um, yeah, yeah. And then and then he after that he got like Lord. the the industry went, the only two roles. The industry really went him. We can use him for and, uh, he just be, yeah, he's, he's not, one of those guys who's just himself now. He's just not a person anymore. Yeah. So he's like up there with or the rock as himself, far as like know. acting abilities. Like I don't know. You remember <laughs> he's one of those guys it's like you get so big, it's like he's never taken a challenging role. Like he's never done like a like a Tom Cruise is a big action star, but Tom Cruise has actually been in some really right. interesting like he was in yeah. uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. He was in Magnolia. He's he's like he doesn't yeah. do that anymore now. He's pure action, but there's parts of Tom Cruise's career. Oh yeah, I would say The Last Samurai is c- kind of like that too, where Hell he's yeah. like he's not really Boy like he, he's, act, he's actually test. a challenging role. Yeah. Um, but then the people now like The Rock. What, what's that? What's that? Show Chris me the Pratt, money movie. Um, that's um Jerry Maguire, which I wouldn't call a challenging role per se. But, but it's it's more challenging than any of Chris Pratt's movies I can think of. Yeah, like Chris Pratt, like okay, like he was in the new Jurassic Park movies, which sucked. Oh god! <laughs> and, and like he's just like 
he's just like the whole time he's just like I am Chris Pratt and I'm here to rescue you like there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing interesting Yo, about if, if it was one of the dinosaurs around and Chris Pratt did that I'd be like I think I'll stay with the uh, dinosaurs this fucked. guy sucks man dude he yeah, just went, he went from actor. Parks and Rec to just being like a-list movie action bullshit star. Yeah. And he's I, done nothing in between. I'm trying to think of It's who like, else. dude, you're just a schmuck. Like, you're not. Yeah. He, he's <laughs> yeah. not an interesting actor, which is like, you get a guy like Chris Pratt when you need a name behind something and you need like a big personality, but like, you don't necessarily need the best acting. Is job. he that good of a voice? Like, does any, like, come on, man. Like, like Mario. Mario. Let's be no. fucking creative here. Yeah. Mario. He's Mario. Yeah. The, the Italian. Who was Donkey Kong? Seth Rogen? Yeah. Uh, Although, hey, wouldn't it be hilarious if Donkey Kong smoked weed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Let's as far as... Take on me on this all right, fucking uh, movie. Have you seen right, the Mario I've movie? The I Mario have not movie. seen it, but but as far as like... Oh, you're defending a movie you haven't seen. So no, 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 I'm talking about just a Seth Rogen voice. <laughs> as, as, as far as choosing a big star to do a fucking voice where it doesn't need to be a star, <laughs> Seth Rogen on, as Donkey Kong... It, it, could be worse casting. I don't know. Yeah, no, no. That movie was filled with people I was tired of because Chris yeah, Pratt, annoying. Yeah, yeah. Seth Rogen, I've really genuinely disliked Seth Rogen for like at least three, four years. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. Because <laughs> it's like, got old. I hate, I hate the, the, because like it's sad to be the 45 year old guy who's still just like, yeah. I just think smoking weed makes everything better. Like, yeah. It's, cool, it's like, cool at 30. It's sad at 45. It varies. It's not even that cool at 30. Because it's, it's like, it even was even only it, cool when he was 30 because I was 17 watching Super Right. That's why it's cool at 30 if you're making 14, like, right. like fucking giant films about it and you're yeah. super successful. It's well, like, I actually retried, not not too long ago, well, like three four years ago. But I tried rewatching Pineapple Express, uh, unwatchable. That's a good me. what? I nah, did not. That's like a good it. movie. I did not like it. None of those Seth Rogen movies stand up except for Super Bad for me personally. But Pineapple Express is a good movie. I, okay, hey, hey, I can them. I can like I remember I think I remember the second time being like hmm. But it was still really, it was still pretty funny. Yeah, but it's like, not a it wasn't like I was like dying the first time I saw yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude. But like, it's because well, again, we were, I was like, 50, you know, whatever, 16, 17. I, th- I think like execution wise is pretty good and idea wise it's not bad. No, I, was, I remember I was watching the beginning. It was pretty funny. And the beginning, because yeah. no, the beginning too, it's just like I was really, I was one of those legalize it guys, you know? Legalize I mean? it. I was super into the idea of pot being legalized. And now I look at pot. And the state that it's in, and yeah, how you kept horrifically illegal. addicted a lot of people are, <laughs> like you two. No. <laughs> but it's like, um, to me, like the it. promise of legalized weed was like, let's find alternative means of like medicine. Let's use this plant for good. But what it turned into is like, here's just another thing that you could buy at a store that you're like psychologically addicted to. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, no offense to you guys. I know you guys smoke pot. But. I mean, I feel like you have addictions too, though, right? Like everyone oh, does. Yeah. Oh, I definitely like, do. So hard, it's like, hard core. It's like pick your. Po- it's basically yeah. just like pick the thing that has a, the least. <clears throat> Negative I think I think, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I feel like a lot legal. of people. Yeah, like that's like that's, I think it's like behind the whole California sober thing, which is just like you exactly. don't do anything besides smoke weed, basically. Exactly, yeah. which I think is better than like I went drink out drinking Wednesday night, and thank God I don't do that regularly. My God, I can't imagine Fucking drinking right now. Like like the next, day, it's just like why the fuck would you do this regularly, dude? Because like I I'm I'm an early bird. Like yeah, I have a too. pretty set schedule. I have kids. It's like I can't believe because like I didn't. I was my son. My first son was two when I stopped drinking. And I would just wake up like fucking out of it, like just super fucking hungover. Yeah. I could not be present with him. Yeah. And like, I can't imagine doing that now with like two kids with like a really like hardcore work schedule and like working out and stuff like that. Like it's such a, has such a negative impact on your life. Yeah. Yeah, there's like times where like I do get like a little tipsy and then I wake up the next morning like, like out of work day. I'm like, what the fuck oh, yeah. was I doing? Yeah. That yeah, dude, it's, it's hardcore. I can't imagine doing it now. But like, uh, I mean, you know, that's the thing though, right? Is that like, like, in terms of just like things that people get into, right? There's like a spectrum of just like how bad it is. And like, yeah. they're like unfortunately, it's like alcohol is one of those things that's like so deeply socially ingrained, even though it is fucking horrible. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's yeah, so little good <laughs> that comes. What, yeah. what good, what good comes from this? You can talk to girls now. Yeah. Ooh, and nice you also, sweat. you sound stupid most of the time. You just yeah. think you sound better when you talk. Don't get me wrong, yeah. though. I mean, like, getting drunk and partying is, like, a lot of fun. But, like, I mean, I, think, I did a lot. I know, but I, I feel like, that. yeah, I think, like, the norm were, like, like, I don't know. It, it, it's, like, there's a lot, I know a lot of people who, drink a lot are the same people who clutch their pearls at like weed right that's like the classic yeah. sort of argument yeah yeah or like yeah 
Yeah. While they're just popping Adderall, snorting <sighs> cocaine and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that another, stuff's okay. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like another uh, thing I'm glad I don't do anymore. Like yeah, cocaine yeah. Maybe makes you fucking. But I feel like I don't know. Like we haven't really observed like the effects of like weed, le- like legally. I feel like what if? I'd be curious to see like the data on like of those people who have like switched over like what their like what the like, impact yeah. on their life was. Yeah. Right? Well, like, I think you're getting to, yeah, you're, yeah. It's something else that somebody can buy, but that's not a bad thing. It's yeah, something yeah. else to have options. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's, it's not vodka. I'm not like <laughs> I don't I don't personally smoke weed. Or it's like I don't tobacco. Or look shit, down or, like, on nicotine. it like terribly. You know, yeah. I don't I don't like I don't like think less of people that smoke weed, but it just negatively impacted my life, and I guess that's. It's easy for me to take oh, that negative impact. I think so, yeah. How? Well, because um, I wasn't reading as much. And when I was reading, I was not retaining it. Mm. And then, like, I would use weed as, like, a like a crutch. Like, you know, like, I would just, like, I, I think there was a lot of unprocessed things I had in my life, which mm. is why I shouldn't generalize, you know? It's I'd, like, you know, this is a me personal thing that, like, Word. I was not dealing with a lot of things in my life, and yeah. I was just using substances as a crutch, yeah. that, like, Pot, I mean, like I think a lot of people liquor, do that. like cocaine, yeah. like Molly, like all the other fucking substances I've done in my life. So, like, for me to have gotten to like a good point in my life, like personally, I had to like get rid of all of that. Like, and like now, all I do is like shrooms every month. You know what I mean? Like, month yeah, of <laughs> dude, Mo- Molly is so gnarly. No, that's yeah. like straight up like a ice cream scoop out of your brain. <laughs> it's yeah, shit. it's hardcore. <laughs> really, I did Molly for the one and only time like a month ago. It's a serotonin dump, right? So it just like yeah. it like exhausts all the like all that neurotransmitter like yeah, in you your just, brain. You, if you take too much, you're really fried the next day. You also don't sleep, so it's like you're sleep deprived. It takes man. two weeks for your serotonin to like fully recover. Typically, yeah. so really? like, yeah, and people like take it a lot. It can like you uh, can be you can be in a deficit like pretty bad. For oh, Jesus, uh, but if you don't, like again, like it's like all things in moderation, as it says in, in in the Bible. Like if you do Molly once every six months and you do it intentionally, like I'm either gonna like connect with this person, like we're gonna sit and just be with each other to and, like talk about something, talk through a conflict, or we're gonna be on Molly. I think that's fine, or I'm gonna go to a sick ass concert. But you just have to space out those. I guess, but based on my experience with it, and maybe it's because I was already so overstimulated as it is, but that's not worth a two week serotonin de- deficit. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> man, that shit can be really fun. <laughs> it, can it can be, be really fun. Really it can be really, like really fun. Like, I could have just only done much. No, the, the problem, yeah, but the, the problem with like MDMA time. culture is like a lot of it's ecstasy. So you would get pills, and I I remember taking pills and being up for like a day or two and be like, I just took meth. Like there has to be <laughs> something in there, because like you don't know the quality of these pills. I just took that. Like, but some, but like now the Molly that's in circulation. Last time I did Molly, it was like it's like crystals, so I, you know, yeah, like, it's just that's what like, it was. yeah, you just crush it up and then uh, put it in some water. Yeah. MDMA. I don't know. I feel like it's interesting MDMA. that you say you read less books. I feel like when I smoke uh, for like the first hour, maybe two, I'm like doing stuff. Everyone's different. Right? Yeah, and then the then after that is like turn my brain off. Yeah, which is why you shouldn't be preachy about like, it annoys me when people are super preachy about like not doing substances. If it's like heroin is one thing, right? Yeah, please don't do heroin. Right. But it's yeah. like if something worked for me, that doesn't mean it's it gonna naturally work for you. Yeah, like, and it's it's yeah. like yeah, yeah. And like, you know, some people are like, Oh, I smoke weed and like they can't talk to anybody. Yeah. But some people like they they like to talk a lot when they're yeah. like high or something. Some like that. people so smoke weed like, and have like panic attacks. They're some like, people, smoke, yeah, anxiety. exactly. And, I, and like, I, and they it takes just like having that self awareness, right? My, some people, my, like, my, not my, saying who, like to get high and clean their whole apartment. <laughs> 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 it's fun. My <laughs> my grandfather tried weed. He's like really old. He's like seventy three or something. Sick. <laughs> I <laughs> pictured that meme of like that old man on a sled in space, <laughs> just like yeah. freaking out, like, oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> He tried, I think he did, he, he got edibles because, uh, you know, he's he's, an old, he's like, I don't want to smoke. And my mom was like, he, he said he took one and then he threw the rest out. He's like, I don't like that. And I was like, yeah, he probably did way too much. Oh, yeah. Like, no one taught him how to do weed. So he took like 10 milligrams his first time ever doing weed and was probably that's just an, like. That's a normal dose. <laughs> Dude, like the, the other thing, my own, my big problem with weed too is like I got a really high tolerance. So like I would be taking like 40 milligrams of edibles. What the I would be fuck? like, so I'm, dude, I'm telling you. I had, dude, I know I had a roommate who would take 30 milligrams a night to go to sleep. And that I was is like, expensive, sh- dude. If shit. I took yeah. a 10 milligram edible, I am it's expensive. Dude, done. my favorite thing to do would be like, I would like be leaving from work on a Friday and I'd get on like, because right near my office was Barbary Coast. So I would just buy those little 
Nice. Um, those little square ones that were like gummies. And I just pop four and I'd sit on the bus and I'd just like let my brain fucking melt on the bus. Like let the let the bus like start like freaking coming in on me. Um, and then by the time I got <laughs> home, again, like I had a kid, like I had a wife. I'm not engaging with them as fully as I could be because I just dosed myself. Yeah, you have a fa- I feel like once you have a family, like yeah. Yeah. No, that's you, have be, you have to be fucking around high. Yeah. When I'm high, I'm just chilling here. Just like, yeah, I feel like know. if I if I had a family, if I was to get high, it would have to be like all right, this is my day. You know this is the day where I get high. You're going to go take the kids to go do something, and this is going to be my high day. Yeah. You got to just pick your spots. Yeah. Hey, Sarah still smokes pot. She's fine with it. She doesn't. She just, she's still there present with the yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, everyone's different. But yeah, yeah, you know, like, I, I remember I was talking to someone recently who was like, I don't need it to have fun. I don't need, like, you know, there's, there's that has, like, yes. perspective, which is totally valid. Yes. But I feel like sometimes, like, you need to, you only need to say that one time to somebody. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I get it, but they keep bringing it up when someone's like this like talking about like the drug or whatever. But I have to lay it out sometimes where it's like you will feel different. Like you are in a yeah. way you are missing out, quote unquote, right? And it's like it's up to you whether you you care about that or not. Yeah. And, and if, if you, you don't care about that or not, yeah. it's fine, but like these things aren't people don't do these things like just cause like right. there is a difference. Yeah, like, you right. will feel different. And you stop. will experience something differently, and like that's just fine. That's well, okay. It's and, okay. It's yeah. not just like and it's not stop like a bad saying thing. that you don't need it because it's kind of like implying that you think that you're better than people who do. Yeah, and I used to be that way. Uh, when I got yeah, to do. when I got mm-hmm. to undergrad, I did not party in high school. I never drank. I never like done any drugs. Basically, wow, what and a I, loser. Yeah, uh-huh. no, straight up. And I did think that I went to a, a like my Me college too, was like much. very social. It was a very big party scene there. Shout out gauchos. Shout out gauchos. <laughs> and like for the first like couple weeks, I was like that. I was like like you know I'm, I don't party like blah 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 like oh I'm, I'm have cool. goals. I, I came here like blah blah. I'm an athlete. Blah, blah. <laughs> and then like looking back after finally loosening up, just like dude, what a little bitch. Like <laughs> I missed out on so many like social engagements and stuff yeah, and shit like that. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's all good. We live and we learn. Yeah, yeah. J- Jacob, where are we at time wise? I think we're uh, we might be good. Yeah, we're probably about an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah let's we're call it there, good. folks. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us for the Pretend Friends podcast. Uh, once again, I'm sorry for being late. Uh, any any shout outs, anything we're doing? Uh, no, just really tired. We hope you enjoyed our down tempo episode. For a, we were pretty talkative for a day. Yeah, so. that wasn't that bad uh, for, uh, for. So what's coming Kyle. up? Oh, yeah. Remember, you know what's the best part? We didn't talk about that fucking debate once. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was, was really bring that bad. up. I did watch it. Yeah. Like, what, like, okay, real quick. Guys, what are you guys' handicaps? I have no fucking clue. I told you I've never swung a golf club before. I don't know. Oh, I dude, that was so Joe Biden could funny. beat you. Yeah, probably could. Dude, every I like I, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, Joe Biden was like every now and then he would charge his super meter and be able to <laughs> yeah. like reel off like a coherent thought. Yeah, and he like you could tell this was like the moment. This was like the pop of like his like <clears throat> pre prepared responses, and he was like, "You're the sucker. You're the loser." And then uh, he go back man. to being like, <laughs> you dude, I, saw, like I saw a clip of him being uh, one of the funniest fucking things I've ever." heard someone say out loud and he was just like there's an epidemic of people getting getting raped by their spouses and their <sighs> brothers and their sisters and it's ridiculous is that the, <laughs> like, I was what? like what? Wait, 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 was this on the debate? there's a debate yeah I heard a sound clip of it dude I saw the sound clip at the beginning where he says trillions and billions, billions. he was talking about people in the United States Damn. when he said that yeah he, he looked real bad <laughs> um, so you know four more years of Trump what could go wrong? Uh, I, 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 for one, my uh, I'm in, curious to see how uh, President Emperor Trump, well, <laughs> King the Trump, God Emperor Trump. Trump, yeah, God yeah. Emperor Trump. Yeah, I wonder what I wonder what his sick ass symbol he'll choose is. Oh, uh, I hope, um, I hope uh, you know uh, he. Do you, do you think it'll be fun carves, to draw? It carves out the path for. Um, Baron Trump to become the Kizrak Hatterak, as we all know he yep, will be, yep, and yep, yep, take yep. America. To the stars and beyond. Well, yeah. whatever symbol it is, I just hope it's fun to carve it into desk uh, or into school desks. Yeah, I think so too. What are you talking about? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Hold, buckle up, folks. It's going to get pretty weird. It's going to be great. Um, it's going to be a fun election season. You, you guys hear that there's rumors that they're going to oust Joe Biden from like. Oh, yeah. Dude, wait, no, what? like the, 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 Democratic- the second after the debate happened, what? like all of the mainstream press, like the standard bearers of the Democrat mainstream media, like New York Times, all those op-eds were like, hey, we're, we're going to need a new guy. 
There's really? a there's a rumor kind of going around that they knew he was like really deeply cognitively impaired, but they had to display it in a way that was like unmistakable. So they're just like, okay, you guys want your Biden? Here's your fucking Biden. Now who are they gonna put in? And like if they oust him, it's either gonna be Shane, good chance, or <laughs> Like Gavin Newsom, who is dude, a, imagine a what that would, CD dude, imagine, oh, imagine what no. that would do for the podcast Scumbag. if Shane was a presidential candidate. Oh hell yeah! Woo. Uh, Finally. Let's we start get, that. We can get AOC on here. We who I saw in like, a really embarrassing video of AOC like hyping up a crowd. You mean a video of AOC? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she was supposed to be the next big thing. She was supposed to be the like, squad, like the squad, and like she just it, it's just up. an embarrassment from I, like start I to like finish. I like kind of yeah. I I started, but she's got big ass titties, folks, and that's all you need. I can't. I got. <laughs> what do you mean Hillary Clinton didn't get elected? I got uh, skeptical. Yeah, well, she was a senator, or whatever. She I got skeptical it. when she went to the Met Gala with that dress. I said, "Eat the rich." Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it's like that it says nothing. While you're at the Met Gala. Yeah, you're at the Met Gala, you weirdo. Yeah. Like, shut yeah. up, bro. You realize you how fucking that. ironic oh, this is? Also, an, another fun deep cut. Uh, there is uh, a, a line of thinking online that she is a CIA asset, uh, which I won't get into here. Folks. I think she's just like a hot chick who doesn't like yeah, dorks. I think, she's got, <laughs> I think she's got some assets. I don't think she is an asset, though. She antagonizes mm-hmm. her in demographic, and maybe they find her especially nauseating because it's just yet another pretty woman who... Doesn't like them. Yeah, that's probably true. Probably has a lot to do with it, honestly. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look into that, that whole replace Joe Biden thing. That's pretty interesting. Looking to replace Joe Biden. Look into the Las Vegas shooting. <laughs> You're look into the that. AOC, <laughs> CIA connections. Uh, and then uh, leave it in the comments. <laughs> you tell me what you think, folks. Oh, and, uh, Bye. Yeah, Bye.